All right, guys, welcome back. And after yesterday's video about the uh, doing the tumblers on the X Tool D1, I got a lot of messages, uh, people asking about you know, plain stainless steel tumblers and how to go about doing those, whether you need spray, whether you don't need spray, and those type of questions. So I decided before I put the setup up this morning that I go ahead and knock out another video and kind of touch on that as well because uh, apparently there is a lot of folks out there that have questions about the stain the plain stainless steel uh, just to give you an insight uh, this is one of three tumblers that i had sanded down and refinished because i'd used them as uh, practice cups about a year ago i took and put some uh sir mark on here and put my logo on it now keep in mind this is this i keep this in the shop any of you that watch my videos regularly know that this thing stays in the shop with me it has been dropped it has been rolled around in the floorboard of my truck. It has rolled around in the back of my truck. Uh, it's been through the dishwasher, no telling how many times. Uh, it's been in the sink with other dishes. And after a year of wear and tear of using it pretty much every week, the majority of the logo is still intact. Uh, I don't care what you put on here, guys. If what this thing has been through for that to still be there, it's pretty good stuff. So. I'm going to show you two different approaches on doing tumblers today. We're going to go over doing them without any marking spray. What can the x D1, and this is the 10 watt. You can do different with the 20, but what can a 10 watt laser di uh, diode laser do to plain stainless as far as marking it goes? And then we're going to step it up after the Surmark has a chance to dry, and we're going to do one with Surmark, and we'll compare the two images. We're going to be using the exact same graphic, the exact same tumblers that have been done the exact way. Uh, like I said, I sand these back down, uh, take all the powder coating off of them <laughs> once, uh, once I destroy them, practicing on them, and I make my little clack shack tumblers out of them because if they're scuffed up, I really don't care. I use them out here in the shop. These are not for resale. They're mine that I use here around the house. So it doesn't matter to me. That way I'm not wasting that tumbler by just simply throwing it in the garbage. Uh, you can get those things cleaned up and I'll kind of share that with you along the way. So stick around. All right, guys, here's our two guinea pigs today. These are identical tumblers. I can turn that around. Uh, they, they actually came out of the same box. Uh, I bought these several months ago, and these were some practice tumblers that I used uh, when I was trying to figure out how, exactly how to use the Surmark. And then once I got done uh, training on them, I took and took some sandpaper, started out with like a 220 grit sandpaper, and then walked it down to like 600 grit. Uh, and sanded them back down so I could reuse them because I don't want to throw them away. Uh, and then I'll use them for my shop, for myself, like I said, because these are going to get beat and banged up out here. And sometimes they fall, they get run over by a tractor. So that way I can get some use out of them. Uh, I just finished doing a, a little final sanding on these guys with some 400 grit uh, just to make sure I had a good smooth surface. They've been sitting on the shelf back there for a long time. I uh, wanted to make sure there's no impurities or <clears throat> any spots that I missed prior to doing this video. I put two coats of Surmark on this and with the Surmark guys this stuff's expensive so you don't want to go crazy with it and put more than what you actually need. Uh, just spray the, the area in which you wish to engrave and I would add probably about 20% to it because when you spray <clears throat> you're going to have it thicker in the center than you will toward the edges so if you kind of overshoot just a little bit with the spray that helps to make sure you got a good solid coat through the whole engrave because the, the, the layer of the Surmark that you put on there will dictate the outcome of the finished product. So this has nothing. I cleaned it with rubbing alcohol and it's just ready to go. We're gonna do it first so I can let the Surmark continue to sit for a little while because I just sprayed this a few minutes ago. This stuff dries relatively fast, but I have learned that even when it looks dry, sometimes it may not be. So it's not a bad idea to let them sit for a while and ensure that your, your Surmark is completely dried before you start burning it. Uh, so we're gonna get this one on the machine. All right guys, first up to bat is gonna be the plain tumbler. Uh, I do have my trusty socket out because this tumbler, the way these sit in there, they wanna rock. Uh, I've got a little small spacer on this one. Uh, I'm using, uh, I think the half inch setting on my spacer. Yes, that's a half inch spacer underneath there. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put my, my handy little socket in there to get that thing 
spaced up to where my work surface is as close to flat as I can get it. It doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but I'm gonna get it as close to flat as I can. And this socket serves me well for that purpose. And we should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and double check and make sure I'm not gonna hit. Yeah, still gonna hit a little bit right there. So I'm gonna need to take the spacer here. Take that out. I'm gonna put my blank. This is just a blank that helps hold the rotor in place and doesn't let it move. All right, that's flat. So that, that worked out without having to use the spacers on the, this one the way it's shaped. Let me go back and check my focus again. You do want to have your focus correct. Or you get too bad out of focus and it's not going to burn right. All right. Going back to my timing marks. And I'm going to choose where I want this engraved to begin on both of these tumblers. And what I'm doing is I'm centering the, the hole in the nozzle right on the edge of this tumbler. And so that means it's going to be about 16 millimeters from the top of the tumbler to the graphic. All right. The best way to determine how large you want your graphic, in my opinion, is to kind of get you a ruler and just look at where you're starting and go and go down from there. Now, this thing has a taper as it goes down, so I'm going to try to stay away from that taper as much as I can. So I'm just going to make this logo like 40 millimeters tall. Uh, actually, let me move this. Let me move it up a little, and we'll make it 50. Let me get closer to that edge. Okay, I'm going to do it 50, uh, and that is going to be my starting point. I've got it timed here correctly and ready to go. So I'm coming over to my machine. I'm going to resize my logo, lock in the aspect ratio so that I don't mess it up. I'm going to resize it to 50 by 50. All right, for this burn, guys, this is clear, no coating, no spray, stainless steel. For this burn, I'm going to run this at 5 millimeters per second at 100% output. I am, however, running 254 lines per inch because it's tumblers, because it's stainless steel. I like the results better when you turn the uh, lines per inch up. So that's going to be 254 on the lines per inch at 5 millimeters per second. This is just standard stainless steel, no coating, no sprays, no nothing. I'm going to frame that out. That looks about right where I want it. And so I'm gonna start this guy up. You're gonna get the out of bounds warning possibly, just hit okay or yes and continue. Now, without a coating on stainless steel, you have to go insanely slow, but you will get a mark. And so I'm just gonna let this run, take a break, and I'll be back once we have some progress to report. One thing I will add, uh, with the stainless is I do not run my air assist on it because it's not kicking up any debris or anything uh, The little bit of fan that's blowing across the laser is enough to keep any just like airborne dust and stuff out So I do not run the air assist because part of the process here is it needs to get the <clears throat> it needs to get the, uh, the Metal hot in order to cause the discoloration so I don't run air assist when I'm doing bare and uh just wanted to throw that in there. And the good news about this is the risk of a fire is very minimal because stainless steel doesn't burn. All right, guys, after quite a lengthy wait, and this is why I prefer doing it with Surmark, uh, this bare stainless is completed. And that is the image that we got with no treatment of the image whatsoever. That is straight stainless. The stainless is stained. Uh, marked whatever you want to call it and you can see the engrave but it's nothing too impressive so now we're going to show you what the difference is with surmark all right i'm going to take this cup here going to slide her under there and i haven't moved anything uh i have left the gantry exactly where it was when it concluded that burn so i'm going to move back over here to my machine now in light burn and I am going to 
frame that out just to make sure everything stays secured. Make sure it's going to be within my Surmark area. And it appears that it is. I've got my current position start location at the top center of the graphic. Same burn that I did earlier. The only difference I'm going to do here is I am going to speed this thing up to 70 millimeters per second at 100% output. Uh, the LPI is set to 254 on this and I am going to send it and we should be off to the races. I'm gonna let that burn for a few minutes. It's not gonna be anywhere near the weight that we had for the uh, bare metal. So I'm gonna give that a few minutes and we'll pick right back up. All right guys, the uh, Surmark version has completed and I'm gonna take that guy out of there. And that's what it looks like coming straight off of the machine. Not really impressive with the gray background, but give me just a second. Let me rinse this thing with some water. That's all I used was water, guys. And I'm gonna wipe it off and get it good and dry here. Uh, and there's the burn with Ceramore. All right, guys, that should answer the question for most everybody that's asked. Uh, I've been, I get a lot of questions about why Sarah Mark, why not just mark the stainless and here's, here is the reason. Let me get these things lined up right. There is a reason. This is non Sarah marked over here. That's just straight stainless. That's what a 10 watt diode. Uh, that's running uh, five millimeters per second at hundred percent output on this guy. This is with Sarah Mark and that's running 70 millimeters per second at 100% output. Now, which, which one do you think looks better? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move them out and uh, let's, see if you can, let's see if you can tell the difference. All right, can you, can, you, can you tell? Okay, that is the reason, guys, that I like Sir Mark. Uh, it, this, this tumbler was done in a fraction of the time it took me to do this one because at five millimeters per second, you know, I'm, I, I, this is over 10 times faster doing it this way because I'm running 70 millimeters per second. It's the exact same burn. The only difference is the power settings that's required. And this requires five millimeters a second to get that finish right there. Uh, this requires 70 millimeters per second to get that finish there. Uh, like I said, this, this is, I just did this one, okay? Let me get my one that I drink out of and y'all see me with this thing all the time. And I've had it for almost probably a year. All right, it's a little beat up, guys. I mean, it's 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 had its it's had its moments in the in the sink. Uh, my wife is is definitely not delicate with the dishes when she's washing them, and she does wash these in the dishwasher. So there's that, and that's held up for almost a year. And you can see right here where it rubs, uh, like if it's laying in a pile of dishes, I guess. Yes, it does get some wear. Uh, and this thing has, I rolled around with it in the back of my truck one time without realizing it. I mean, I have, I have put it through a lot of, of, of bad situations that you probably shouldn't put them in. But that is the result right there with, with Ceramark. That is what you get, all right? We can even do it like this. Put these guys inside each other. There you go. Ceramark and no Ceramark. So... For all y'all asking the question, do you spray or not spray? If you want this, spray. If you don't, don't spray. So that is all I know to tell you about that, guys. That is my opinion. Uh, I do use Ceramark a lot. So I buy the large uh, can. But literally, guys, when you spray these things, I know this is this is $100, okay, on Amazon. I'll put a link down below if you're interested. But when you, when you put this stuff on, it's just simply uh sweep sweep let it dry give it you know give it a little while wait till it looks dry and then two more sweeps and then set that thing to the side let it set for a few hours you know at least a couple hours and once it's once it's completely dried then take it over to the engrave and the mark that you'll get will be like this guy so that is my opinion those are my settings that i use uh there may be settings that work better your machine is going to be definitely going to be a little different. You're going to have to probably sacrifice a tumbler to determine what your settings are. But then after that, you can sand them down and use them for 
an experiment like this. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're not aware, uh, I've started doing my Sunday night lives at 7 p.m. on Sundays. Uh, now, there may be Sunday, some Sundays to come that I may not have an opportunity to do it, but if you'll go check out my Facebook page or check out the YouTube channel, uh, if, if I do have a cancellation or something that doesn't work with my schedule, I'll try to go in and, uh, and have that event deleted so that it won't be there. But if you have questions or if you want to discuss it, you know, more or less face-to-face -face in a live format, uh, that might be something you want to look at doing, and I'll answer whatever questions I can answer. Uh, you guys are going to be the ones bringing the questions, bringing the content. I'm, I'm just coming to, to, have, <laughs> to, to have a discussion with you. Uh, if nobody has questions, we'll hang out. We'll just, we'll just talk for an hour, and we'll conclude. But that, that is my opinion, guys, on Surmark, you know, to spray or not to spray, all right? That is, that is the question, so to speak. Uh, preferably, I like to spray. It takes a lot less time. And now, you know, the, the stain may be more permanent than the Surmark, but it takes a lot longer to put that on there. So if those are uh, things that you've been considering, I hope this video helps you out. And as always, if you uh, haven't already, hit that subscribe button, guys. Uh, give me a thumbs up. You can comment. Let me know what you think about the video, about the content. If there's anything that you want to see on the channel that I haven't done, or maybe I haven't done it in a long time, kind of like the tumblers. It's been a long time since I did tumblers, and the uh, video quality, audio quality has, has came up significantly here at the shack. So if there's anything that you want to see on the channel, uh, send me a message, drop me a comment, let me know, and I'll try to work that in if at all possible. And uh, until then, guys, until next time, like I say, always be safe and have a good day.